Hi, my name's Brendan. I'm with Family Piano Co. We're at our Golf Mill Malls location in Niles, Illinois, and wanted to quickly um, play side by side by side and review and discuss the differences for the all of the Kawhi uprights, um, or at least the major models of it. So I want to start by talking about the actions. Um, right here is a grand action. It says Young Chang, but it's a similar to how um, Yamaha makes their actions, Steinway. Uh, most of the man major manufacturers, that's because it has a traditional wooden action, which is okay. This is how um, pianos have been made uh, for a little bit over 100, 150 years. Um, and this is, you know, there's plenty of fine pianos that have a traditional wooden action. But the cool thing that Kawhi has done is they replace a lot of these wooden parts with a superior material. It has nothing to do with sound, but it's an ABS styran with carbon fiber reinforcement. This is their Millennium 3 action for their uprights. And this is pretty cool because um, it doesn't swell and contract with humidity. So all these little pinpoints right here, they all say exactly the right diameter. And because it's such a um, strong, resilient, stiff material, it actually transfers the energy a little more efficiently. So it feels great on day one, and then it continues feeling great for way longer than if you were to just use wood parts. They do use wood parts, wooden parts, for uh, parts that need to have it. Um, the density of the core of a hammer, it should be wood. It impacts the sound. Um, the, ac the actual um, bounce in the hammer shank, it should be wood. So they use wood where it's important, but where they can use a superior material, they do. And they've been doing this for many, many years. Um, in the early 70s, they got a, um, they replaced one part of the jack here with the um, ABS Styran. Uh, and that worked great. The second generation, they replaced all these parts with this wood colored. Um, ABS Styran. And then the third generation, they added the carbon fiber um, in here and made it a little lighter, reduced the amount of material. Um, and that's the Millennium 3 action that was introduced, uh, you know, beginning of the millennium here uh, for their third generation action. Um, the reason why I discussed the generations is that um, the Millennium 3 action is in the vast majority of uh, Kawhi's products, but for their most affordable of their um, uprights, uh, mostly the uh, K15 and the 506N, which we're going to play here in a second, they actually have the second generation action, uh, the ultra responsive action. So um, that I, this is what the K15 is, you can kind of see in here. It's really, really nicely made, and it looks like it's all wood, um, but we're going to kind of scoot in here and you can kind of see that um, it's actually just the wood colored ABS here uh, that you can kind of see. So um, that's going to be one of the differences. Now I can play decently, um, but we've got a much better player here. So I'm going to have Max play a little bit on the uh, K15 to start, since that's kind of what we're discussing here. Um, so this is the K15 and the polished mahogany. It's just a fantastic feeling instrument. Um, it's very responsive to touch, and you can immediately tell. That's when when you put a Kawhi piano up against um, any other with a traditional action. It you can immediately tell. Um, it just feels crisper. Feels a lot more responsive to your touch. Yes, yeah, so this is the 506N right here. If you notice, it has a very modern um, look. No legs on it. Um, a few things to note real quick. Um, the majority of Kawhi's models have the slow fall. Um, this one does not, so you're just going to want to be a little bit careful about that. Um, and you can uh, prop the lid open like this, um, or you can kind of push this down and have it all the way down like this. And can you demonstrate a little bit on the, um, the middle pedal, the practice pedal, real quick? So the right does what you expect to do. It's a damper, but the middle pedal, if you push it down into the left, Gonna, it's going to reduce the volume. And that's because when we look inside, there's going to be, and if you can release that real quick, um, there's going to be this piece of felt that goes between the hammers and the strings. So you can kind of 
you either have it up or have it down. Um, so that's one way of reducing the volume by about 50%. And that's going to be a feature that's on uh, every piano that we're looking at today. Um, so that's the practice pedal on the right. Um, next up is the 506N. Um, this is um, under the hood, very, very similar to the K15. Basically the exact same action, uh, same scale design. All the strings are the same length, same design. But because of the way the cabinet is shaped and sized, um, it's going to sound different. Um, so some people prefer the K15 sound, some people prefer the 506N, um, and the music desk is going to be a little bit different. So as you can see here, um, it's just a very large practical music desk, and um, it's a more studio um, style of cabinetry. So very practical. But this is the 506N, uh, basically the exact same price as the K15. So um, it's not really a price difference, it's more of a stylistic question. the cabinet it was a larger more durable cabinet it really mm -hmm. you know gives extra space for the sound to bounce around on the inside so you can tell upon playing it just it, it gains a certain resonance from that larger cabinet it's very nice thanks Vix. I, I agree uh, so this is the k200 so this is kind of where the k series really begins with Kawhi. Um so this is going to have the um, millennium 3 action that we were talking about earlier um, and this one does feature a slow fall on the, the fall board right here this one is also has a different scale design that means the string lengths are going to be different under the hood um, it's designed to have a different sound so the 506n right here is an institutional one it's designed to go in schools where um, projection is really a kind of a, a key priority so it has that kind of big it, you know it kind of projects really well the k200 is designed to have a fuller richer t um, tone and uh, you can have more color and kind of more control over the sound with this. So um, especially for in-home use, um, this is going to be great. So I'll play a little on here. This is the K200 and it comes in a wide variety of finishes. Um, this is the uh, satin ebony, but it comes in polished ebony, uh, satin and polished mahogany, um, and a couple other finishes as well. to little nuances. And it's overall just a very crisp instrument. Um, it does exactly what you want it to do. So very solid. Thanks, Max. And here's um, a very uh, similar instrument right here. This is the UST-1. Um, so this was recently refreshed from the, the UST-9. Um, and uh, this is one, or sorry, this is the ST-1. They, UST-9 was the previous one. They updated to the ST-1. Um, it's very, I, my understanding is it's a very, very similar scale design, uh, same action, um, but it's going to have these big, awesome wheels. Makes it super easy to wheel around. This is a, a personal favorite of ours as we have to move inventory around. Have this huge music desk, lots of room to put music, um, and you can lock the top and the bottom this does have the slow close on here um, so you can kind of lock that it also comes with a unique bench we have boxed up keeping it safe but um, it's it's kind of a, a cool bench um, for the st1 right here um, so some nice little tweaks from the previous generation uh, the other one had a um, the middle pedal was a um, bass sustain this one is a practice pedal like the rest of the uh, series here so we'll play a little bit on the st1 
of my personal favorites of the whole Kawhi lineup. Um, a lot of the reason is because it's every bit as crisp and nuanced as the K200, or else we'll see on the K300, but it has, you know, a very resonant sound to it. Um, also, the, the music desk is just very, very nice to have, um, especially if you play with loose leaf paper. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, you, you can probably fit like up to six sheets side by side on here, so that's, that's a really big plus right there. Big, we're a big fan of that. Uh, this one comes in satin finishes, um, and I think they just introduced a polished ebony finish that we're waiting on. So uh, we're kind of excited about that. Um, so next up is sort of the flagship. This is the K300. So uh, the height of most of these so far have, uh, you know, the K15 is like 44 and a half. Um, the uh, 506N, sorry, the, uh, five, the K15 is 44, 506N 44 and a half. Uh, 45 on the K200 and 46 on the uh, um, ST1. Now we're looking at 48 inches, so a little bit more of a substantial jump. This is the uh, K300 in the polished uh, snow white, uh, which I think is really, really striking. Um, one thing to note as we go from um, smaller instruments, uh, Kawai is a Japanese company um, headquartered out of Hamamatsu, Japan. Um, they did build from the ground up their own facility in uh, Indonesia about 20 years ago. They put out great products out of Indonesia and that helps keep the price points low. When we go to the K300 and above, these are made in Hamamatsu, Japan uh, using Japanese labor. So there is a little bit of a jump to account for that um, in price, um, but some people really prefer uh, the quality of it. Um, I think um, you can listen for yourself and you can make your own decision on that. Uh, we find that doing all the warranty calls is there's no difference in the number of uh, calls about the instruments. Um, so there's not, you know, the quality is, is excellent on anything from Kawai, um, but you um, may prefer the sound of the Japanese built instrument. So this is the K300. instrument. Um, you could tell with the increase in height, you get a lot more depth. The one thing that I really appreciate about Kawhi, just as a brand in general, is even when it has all this power, all this depth, um, you know, it's still a nice warm sound as opposed to a very bright sound, nice and warm, which allows you to really easily switch from very kind of calm, quiet tempos. But then it also has the power to So this is the K300. We have a very similar model here. This is the K400. So this is one that only comes in the polished ebony, um, but it is a uh, basically the same thing as the K300, but looks different. So it has the grand style music desk right here, um, and it has the kind of grand style um, way of the fallboard right here for it to kind of slow close right there. So it's just a little bit different, um, kind of a cool style. I mean, there's a couple bucks more than the K300, but not terrible. Um, and then if you want to take the uh, music desk off, um, you do have these uh, music holes here. So the uh, sound can actually come out here, um, even with the music desk in place. So it is actually going to um, sound a little bit different. So we're going to put the um, music desk back on, and then we're going to play a little bit of something for you so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. Um, and uh, so far, we've had pretty much all of the lids close on this. Um, you can prop the woods open a little bit. We'll make a little bit of a difference in sound. A couple things, another thing I forgot to mention is that the K series benches are nice padded adjustable benches. Um, 
that uh, are just real nice uh, matching benches. So um, that's one perk of going with um, the Pro Series, uh, K Series here. music desk here is just a wonderful advantage and you can also notice that due to a uh, slightly different cabinet design the sound feels just just that much more expansive mm -hmm. yeah we're all big fans of the k400 around here um, and then next up is the k500 um, so we got the 51 inch uh, upright right here um, so this one is awesome um, there's gonna be a couple differences from the series so far so unlike the standard female tops this is going to have Kawhi special k or sorry the um uh special neotex coating so basically it's designed to just grip a little bit more um like ivory both on the whites and on the black keys uh for even there you'll notice that the um you can lock the um uh you, you can lock the k500 here um because of that you cannot actually fold this part down this part is all one piece so um you know as you kind of do this um that is one part of it on um, the k300 you can fold that piece down just as a quick note um and then um you've got uh, a bigger soundboard longer bass strings we'll show you in a second um this one actually does have duplex scaling on the top and which adds to the richness overall um so we'll play a little on here. Um, and so on the back of every piano, you have this big thin piece of wood called the soundboard right here. And as you go up in size, you have a, um, uh, a bigger sound, just like a bigger drum. So this is kind of like the head of a drum. It vibrates, pushes the sound out, just like a bigger drum is louder and richer than a smaller drum, some sort of thing with this. And then on, um, on any piano, the strings on the very top end are gonna be very, very short. And the strings on the low end are gonna be as long as you can get away with. Same sort of thing here, so you can see that on a grand piano. So, without further ado, the K500. Of, of the K500 is that it's an upright that plays like a grand and you can really tell just from the amount of power that you have that it, it's much more in line with what you'd expect from you know a very large you know kind of living room style grand as opposed to a traditional upright so it's, it's really good if if, especially if you're looking for that kind of grand feel, grand sound, um, but in, in the compact shape of an upright. Thanks, Max. And while we're here, I actually want to take a look. We've got over here uh, two, other, two other uprights um, that are some kind of cool variations on what we've talked about so far. Um, and so I want to I show you a little on this. This right here is the 200 ATX3. So what's cool about this is you've got a, a real acoustic piano. It's just the K200 that we were just looking at earlier. So you look at it like this. And then you can flip a switch, and um, that's all you hear. You don't hear anything. That's because there's a, a bar in it um, that kind of moves 
into place so it prevents the hammers from quite striking the string or when released the hammers do strike the string so that puts that in place there's also you can't really see them but there's actually um, sensors um, attached to each and every key action the, the action for each and every key um, multiple sensors that help you, the computer all goes into this little color touchscreen right here um, so this is the um, color touchscreen of the uh, CA78, CA98, uh, Novus 10, um, same um, user interface here, which makes it, uh, our job a lot easier for learning the stuff, but it's also just a really, really nice way of doing it. So you can take headphones and you can plug them in and so you can kind of hear coming out of the headphones, uh, you can play this totally silently, um, which is great. So anytime, day or night, you can play this. Um, so this is the K200ATX3. Um, this one is, is headphones only. Um, you, what's cool about the next model of the K300RS is this one um, has the same lovely color touchscreen, same ability to plug in headphones to fly. On the back, let me see, on this side, on the soundboard itself, uh, you've got bolted into the soundboard um, speakers. Um, they're, they're transducers. So um, when those go back and forth to make sound, they actually vibrate the soundboard. And um, you can um, play a completely. So I've got the volume turned all the way down. This is what the piano. By itself. I'm going to flip the switch nothing. And then I'm going to turn the volume up on this. So that's it. Just no hammer striking strings, just the computer sending um, uh, sound out the speakers and out the soundboard speaker system. But the cool thing is you can actually do both. So you can have the hammer strike the string and have the um, speaker going. And uh, it, you can get a huge sound that way. choose something else like for example um, we can find let's see if we got some strings I like the string ensemble This is the uh, computer screen and the brains of the CA78. So you have all of the features of a really nice digital, where you've got um, you know, the ability to play multiple sounds at the same time, to be able to split up the keyboard, to be able to record um, MP3, WAVE, and MIDI files. Um, it also has on board a um, Bluetooth audio receiver on here. So um, if I wasn't using my phone to uh, take this video, um, I could pull it out and stream Spotify or YouTube or anything through this lovely sound system that's on board. It also has Bluetooth MIDI, so it can transmit um, uh, data to apps on your iPad or your phone, uh, which allow you to do some pretty cool things with all sorts of third-party apps, uh, which is really nice. Um, and there's a ton of features that are all in here. Um, on the interface, the interface is the same for both of you can kind of see here. Um, you can um, have this connect different ways. So you can plug in a thumb drive, you can plug it directly into your computer if you don't want to use Bluetooth. Um, you do have the old style um, MIDI connectors, the five pin. Um, you've got line in, line out. Um, so like on this K200, you can run a line out to a sound bar or your own sound system if you don't want to pay for the speaker system uh, that's on the K300 RS. You've got headphones, so you can do the old, the, the new 3.5 millimeter, um, which is pretty standard nowadays, or if you've got an older quarter inch, you can put that there. Um, a real easy knob here, a power button, and then you can kind of hang up your headphones right there. 
Um, so that's the same for, for both of them. So that's a quick overview of all of the Kawhi uprights, including their really cool hybrid options. Thank you.